tell us about your education? I've got a couple of different concerning things I'd like to hear from you. That varies widely. Uh, <laughs> Uh, as far as uh, electronic technology, my degree there is from Caltech, and physics is from MIT. When did you graduate? Did you go to Pierce College? Yeah, I did. Okay. Where did you hear that? A friend said something that you know, somebody I don't even know, I, I just thought, well, that's something I want to ask, because it's clear from my mind. Yeah, I went to Pierce and Northridge, and then uh, I'm by, you know, I'm terrible at dates. I don't remember what date I was at Pierce. Probably like in 76 or something. I was at Pierce and then 77 or 8. I went to Northridge just for a short time for some classes. And I was at Caltech and then MIT after that. Yeah, some critics have suggested that there is not a Department of Naval Intelligence as shown on your W, your IRS record. I wonder if you could address that. Yeah, I've heard people say that before, but the bottom line is if you, uh, and I've let other people check into that, uh, Bob Exler is a guy that managed to trace that down through the IRS, and if you write the zip code number on the bottom of it, or NC-101 or something like that, or NC something anyway, it gets to it gets to somewhere in the Navy, you know. As far as if there's a department there, I don't know, but uh, you know that's that's the W two that I got sent. So, well, that same person was saying though that the zip code that was on there was someone that was in reserve, unused in Washington. Some zip code that was actually, unused. Yeah. Well, now he had he had uh, correspondence with someone in the Navy through that address. I'm not talking about Bob Exler, I'm talking about Bill Moore. Oh, Bill Moore, yeah. I don't I don't know, Bill Moore... <laughs> I know, he's an enigma in himself. Yeah, I'm I just mean, saying he, that was his point. He, I guess he his disputes everything I say. He said, well, there's right. two different types on here, right. and this, and I said, well, you know, <laughs> I don't know. So, uh, you know, that's basically what I get sent, and, uh, you know, I, I've seen enough information to where that zip code works. And uh, okay. that's all the information I have. I really haven't pursued it myself. But maybe clarify for them why you think this is a legitimate document because of the certain elements of it that are, are correct. Well, oh, because of the amount of money. Right. Yeah, no one would yeah. know the amount of money yeah. except me. And that's correct. correct. Uh, right. you know, so <laughs> that's all the information I've got. Huh? Well, I have two questions. Uh, they're not related to each other, but one is are they silent or noiseless? And uh, B, who signed your paychecks? As far as are they silent or noiseless, um, there's a slight hiss before they take off and up to a certain altitude. And that sounds like um, a high voltage hiss of sorts. Uh, that's all the sounds that I've heard. I've heard lots of reports about, you know, weird flying saucer type sounds, but uh, you know, I've never encountered that. Um, who signed my paycheck? There was a signature on it, but I don't know, you know whose it was. I never even, you know, the time that I cashed the paycheck, I never even concerned me tracing anything down. So there wasn't a company name up in the corner, like most paychecks? Well, when I worked for the yeah. federal government years ago, all you'd no, get that, uh, is a green treasury check. There would be no other papers with it or anything from the Department of Treasury. No, no this said the Department of Naval Intelligence on it. On the or, check? Yeah, on the check. Okay. <coughs> hmm. Thank you. Bob, when a craft like that comes into our atmosphere, would you expect a loud report that might be explained? Well, it's solely dependent on the velocity that it enters. So, if uh, you're dealing with something that manipulates gravity and doesn't have to slingshot into the Earth, uh, you know, you could come in at a low speed, not heat up, not, not really encounter anything. But it's velocity any. dependent, is that so? Right. Well, yeah, if you're traveling supersonic, then you get a report. If you're not, you don't. You know, it's pretty straightforward. Uh, when you were at S4, to your knowledge, what was the approximate percentage of civilian versus military personnel, and in what kind of uh, job categories? The civilian personnel were uh, scientific in nature, and the military personnel were only uh, security. And as far as the percentage, it was a small percentage of uh, scientific to uh, military personnel. Were there any secretaries? There, I'm sure there were offices all over the place, but when I came into the facility, I was essentially escorted right to where I work and worked there, other than the few amount of times that I got to walk into the hangar. 
and uh, under an escort to them. When I left, it was the same. So like I said, there might be offices, there might be bunkers in there, there might be underground levels, there might be an alien nest in there. I have, you know, I have no idea. <laughs> Excuse me? How did you eat? The only place I ever ate was at Area 51. So if there was a cafeteria there, I never got to eat in it. I usually came with Dennis Mariani, who was my supervisor. Now, I wasn't on uh, a full-time swing, essentially. I flew in usually between 3 and, or between 4 and 5 o'clock at night and left by 11. So I was only there for a short time each day. Hmm. On board the bus from Groom Lake to Papoose, how many people were on that, were boarding with you? How Very many, few. More than one, more than yourself. As me, me and Dennis, and usually, well, or actually, not usually, occasionally, one other person. How about Barry? I don't think I ever saw Barry on the bus. Just two of you. Mm -hmm. Is there a chance that any of the workers might defect? Yeah. Barry would. That's why I spent some time trying to get a hold of him. And there was actually some time after all this hit the news and the whole thing went down, we got a call from Dennis, my supervisor, and he arranged a meeting at the Union Plaza Hotel. And when we got there, I brought three people with me, and I think he said he'd be in the casino area somewhere, and we went, I didn't think Gene Huff came with me. And uh, we went into the area, and walking down the corridor, I recognized one of the security personnel from there. And then when I finally found Dennis, he didn't even acknowledge my presence. Uh, we couldn't get his attention, and, uh, you know, I left. So apparently either someone had known of the conversation and sent someone down there and made themselves obvious to Dennis or, or something happened and we left. But I think that was uh, where Dennis really wanted to say something. Uh, I understand that you used hypnotic regression to get at some of the details of your experience. If so, what is your impression of hypnotic regression as a tool? It's probably reasonable because uh, there are specifics they contend that you can sit there and reread a document as if you had, you know, as if you were there reading it for the first time. And uh, what I was mainly interested in was in some of the schematics and drawings. And uh, you know, I did some of the hypnosis stuff with Lane Keck, uh, the hypnotherapist in town, and uh, I was certainly able to redraw uh, a lot of the uh, schematics and you know engineering drawings along those lines. And it's. Uh, so as far as using it as a tool for that, that seems to work. Uh, for anything else, I don't know. Uh, I have two, two things. Uh, one's a comment, the other one's a question. Uh, first of all, um, when I was 12 years old, I, I saw a daylight flying disc, which looked exactly like one of Billy Meyer's photographs 15 years later. And, uh, and this just- You mean came, earlier? No. Uh, Earlier, 15 years earlier, I saw this disc, and then Billy Meyer took a photo in 1975 of the same, exactly the same disc that I saw, you know, down to the last detail, it was the same. And then you said that, that the sport model looked a lot like the same photo in an uh, uh, interview with George Knapp, and uh, I thought that was really interesting because it kind of tied it all together for me. And then, uh, just, I just wanted to make that comment. And then the uh, question I had was, uh, what was the year of your graduation from MIT, and, and did you get a PhD? No, it was a master's degree. Just a master's uh, degree. The year, what was the year of graduation? Probably, probably 82, because I think I left there. You went to Los Alamos? I went to Los Alamos. Thanks. Is there some, can you talk about the mind control that uh, some people have said was used on you that, uh, when you decided to leave also with friends? What mind control would that be? <laughs> uh, someone made a comment that, uh, that you might have been a uh, victim of some sort of mind control. or there... That came about by, uh, when I was first brought there, they had a, a doctor, or nurse actually, in a uh, medical, medical setup there. and. Right after I had signed all the release papers and my first time out there, I went in and they did what I perceived to be an allergen test because they put a grid on my arm and different, uh, you know, pricked me with different chemicals and, uh, you know, was there 
contention that, well, boy, there's a lot of strange elements here and unusual things you'll be working on, so they're trying to see if you're going to have any adverse reaction to them. And uh, I was given something to drink. I, I said it smelled like pine, uh, which it, it did. <laughs> you know, it's, that's the best way I can describe it. And uh, a lot of people jumped on that saying, aha, well, that's the mind control substance. When yep. you leave work, you're going to forget everything. When you come back, you're going to remember <laughs> everything. But, you know, I think if anything, it was an anti-allergen drug or something along those lines. How about the threats? Are kind of threats being used? You know, yeah, there's plenty of threats. Well, yeah. I mean, can you, can you explain, like, bodily harm or the loss of pension or what, what kind of stuff? Was well, the loss of pension and, uh, you know, jail time, that was part of signing the paperwork. As far as bodily harm after they caught... Uh, that's the time I brought out John Lear and a couple other people up there. Then they right. threatened me, and uh, they really didn't get much reaction out of that. Then they threatened my wife at the time, and uh, you know that uh, they really threw out everything they could, you know, without physically, you know, attacking me. Well, that's what I was wondering. And once they knew it was Bill, you and not Dennis or someone else or anything, why didn't they just arrest you under charges of you know violating the act? Well, they can't arrest me because they'd have to admit, you know, that this is classified material. Well, you were talking to, about Yeah, it. they'd have to release it. You know, why right. did they, you know, kill me? Right. Uh, I, you know, that I really don't know. You know, maybe that had to do with um, how I got the job or, you know, referencing the connection to Ed Teller or something along those lines, but uh, I don't know. Were there any contractor names, departments? Division that were mentioned or signed on the wall or anything like that, referring to any compounds or anything like that? No, but I know EG&G had nothing to do with it. That's the only light I can shed on that because uh, I had mentioned that to them once because that's where I was interviewed at the EG&G building and uh, I thought that it was part of an EG&G project and I think it was Dennis who said that, uh, you know, we don't let those people, you know, anywhere near this place or anything. You know, they were just... Uh, uh, a sore thumb to him. Well, as a, as one way of getting this information out, at the same time to have the government stop harassing you, did you ever consider bringing them to court? Mm. On what them, charge? Well, threatening well, you and your family, harassing you, and as a result of that, forcing them to... With what evidence would I do that? I mean, it's hard enough to, to prove it to, uh, you know, the layman in general, but taking it to court, it's impossible. I mean, there's... Uh, so yeah, there's plenty of people that don't believe me anyway. So you never sought out legal counsel with regard to any of this? Well, a, a little, well, yeah, initially. And, uh, you know, the bottom line is, you know, the attorney said there's absolutely nothing to go on. It's a total waste of time. And, you know, if anything, it's going to be a public forum uh, to discredit me in, in some manner. So, uh, you know, why even go through with it? What about class action and ACLU and that sort of thing? But still, you need, you know, some sort of evidence that uh, this happened. Even if I pulled out a piece of 115 and said, here, well, what does that have to do with anything, you know? And uh, there's nothing that, uh, and what did they do to violate my rights that I didn't agree to at the beginning? Right. So they really had their bases covered. It's pretty dirty what they did to you in Las Vegas there in 1990 in the summer. That was pretty dirty. <coughs> what was that? They took you to court. Well, yeah, that was, that was my own fault. <laughs> so you've been through your counseling yeah. by saying that, right? How well, would um, someone get a piece of paper explaining the physical properties used in these in this mode of transportation? The physical properties. Or, I mean, uh, I mean the the formulas used in the in the gravity. You're area. being uh, watched currently. Do you have any uh, interaction with? <laughs> Strange you should mention that. Uh, there has been nothing uh, for probably these four years or three years, whatever it's been, but uh, the other day, uh, one of my phone lines has not been working and the, the other one was breaking up, so I called Centel down and uh, they checked the house out and said there's nothing in the wiring here and they called me down from Charleston Boulevard from the, from the telephone pole and they said my individual line was cut and that the other one, the other wires were stripped and twist tied together, so of course, me being paranoid thinks well someone tapped in there, but I really can't think of another excuse as me being, uh, you know, just my single lines being played with. But uh, that's what he said, and you know they filed a report on that, so that's one form of documentation. Uh, you say your records at Caltech and MIT have somehow disappeared. Uh, and Los Alamos and, and probably everywhere else. Is there any way you can you could re reconstruct uh, your coursework and your professors? Oh sure, I've got people that. Uh, 
you know, that I went to school with, and you know, George has spoke, George Knapp has spoken to some of them, and you know, even flew with me up to Los Alamos and spoke to my colleagues there, and uh, you know, it's just. Could you could you reveal some of your professors at MIT and Caltech? Yeah, if you want. I don't have a list of them here. Dr. Duxler, I think, was one of them, and uh, uh, Hosfield was another. Hosfield. Hosfield. H O H S F I E L D or something along those lines. But they remember you? Oh yeah, Hosfield I know well. These were at MIT or Caltech? Uh, Hosfield was at uh, MIT. De Duxler was at Caltech. Yeah, um, who's Barry? <laughs> Barry's a guy I, I worked with. He uh, essentially worked on the buddy system there and. Uh, so when you have ideas to bounce bounce off of, and uh, Barry Castillo or Castile, was he there before you, or yeah, a long time? Still there, or he's probably still there. Did you get any information from him? Well, he essentially taught me everything that they had done up to date. In the course of your work, uh, did they ever mention any other facilities and installations around the country where associated work was being done? No, they did mention, though, that uh, this was the place that all of this stuff was brought to, and it was really purposely condensed here to keep an eye on everything and to have, uh, you know, immediate access to everything that dealt with this, uh, you know, the alien technology. Regarding the craft, uh, the alien craft, um, were is there any test personnel that <coughs> crashed them, and if so, do you know about what the causes were? I didn't read about any crashes during tests at all. So you'd think that there would be some, but uh, I didn't. Was, uh, when you were at Caltech, were you affiliated with any of the student houses? No. Um, when I first heard of uh, S4, it reminded me a lot of disk testing that I've heard of that goes on in Australia at Pine Gap. And I was wondering if you know anything about Pine Gap. Did you read anything about Pine Gap? Can tell us about. Uh, I really don't keep abreast of the UFO information. As far as officially, I never read anything. I've heard the name Pine Gap mentioned, but uh, I haven't heard anything about that. Has anybody ever approached you with a screenplay author? Oh, God, yeah. <laughs> Constantly. Constantly. You ever consider it? Uh, yeah. The main problem, Columbia Pictures last year really wanted to do it, and... Uh, they said we're making a screenplay, and, and my only problem is is that uh, if you guys are going to make a movie, it has to be exactly what happened and not the Hollywood version. I don't want to see Steven Seagal in it or anything. Why they recruited someone with a master's instead of a PhD? And no, that's that's a really good question. <laughs> like I, I've always said there's plenty more people qualified than I am, and uh, if there's any re there's only two reasons they could have. Is either number one uh, was that Dr. Teller essentially juiced me into the position that said you know there's a guy bubbles iron, no one find a place for him, or that the fact that I have traditionally approached everything from a very strange angle. And uh, you know, essentially off the beaten path, and you know, tackling you know, technical problems. And uh, so it's only one of those two reasons. And well, this is a third one that I, I have no idea about. Uh, two things: Do you think they'll ever release this information? And if they don't, how do you think it'll ever come out? Besides people like you know, or will it be something like what you're doing? Well, hopefully it's not this way. Hopefully there's going to be a release of information eventually. But uh, you know, whether or not they're going to say. Uh, you know, hey, we've been keeping the secret for so long. It uh, almost seems to me that they need a staged incident to, to get them off the hook. Take a flying saucer up in a C-130 and push it out the back and say, look, it crashed. You know? <laughs> <laughs> How would they overcome the G-forces in the rapid change of direction? They don't apply once you've distorted. Distorting gravity, essentially having a gravity amplifier, distorts time and space, and that those really don't apply. There's no interaction. So there would be no effect on humans either? No, there's no effect inside at all. Bob, did your, uh, when you were working on the S4 project, did your education and whatever scientific vision that you have 
permit you to believe that at some point you'd be able to make a meaningful contribution to the program? And, and if so, after how much time and project? Uh, I was always in serious doubt whether or not they were going to get rid of me because uh, I had, you know, there really, really wasn't anything that I could contribute. I wasn't an expert in any particular field uh, that they were dealing with. So, uh, I mean, I made some contributions as far as uh, uh, determining what element they were dealing with was, but... Uh, that was significant, right? Yeah, <laughs> to some degree. I was wondering, uh, when you were at uh, Calvin, or it might be in Caltech, I forgot if you had an afternoon year or not, but did you come from a pretty, uh, your, was your, your education pretty traditionally grounded as far as your own views, as far as physics and what is considered common knowledge as opposed to your other things? And in other words, how surprised were you when they started showing you all this hardware and these concepts that could do things that is really Oh, very. I was. How long did it make you like start drafting that? Even when I was reading the documentation, you know, the, the alien, the alien question really never entered my mind. I kept pushing it off to, you know, all this group of scientists secretly came up with. Now, I never, and I, I just had a mental block against that because I always thought flying saucers were totally ridiculous, and the people that, uh, you know, really paid attention to such phenomena were. We're just out in left field, you know, they belong. Thanks, Bob. <laughs> <laughs> but it, it really made very little sense to me that, it, that uh, you know, anyone would, would deal with something like that. So I really held out to the very end, and, uh, and they finally said, well, Bob, <laughs> and that was it.